So after about nine or ten days of training in this way, I decided to take the crayons off. Now why I'd done that was because he was strong in what he was doing. He was flying to the post and back to the glove. He was focusing on me almost the entire time. And I was confident that I could get him back from anywhere that he'd gone to land on. Now he's free flying and looking great. He's not a problem taking him out to new areas and letting him have a fly around. And he's doing fantastic with it. Well hey guys, welcome to Life of Gaz and today what I'm going to do is carry on uh, with a little bit of barn owl training. Now I've done this first initial video two years ago and Ghost my little barn owl is now two years old and some of the comments which people have had have obviously wanted me to carry on and actually sort of explore bird of prey training a little bit more. But what I'm going to do for in this first video, well technically the second one, what I'm going to do is just talk about screeching with these birds and not only how to uh, sort of alleviate it, how to stop it when you're around them, but also how to use it. So just out here today, and so I unlock the door and I'll head out, if you come out with me you shouldn't be able to hear my bar now. Um, that's because I've not told him to start calling but should I ever lose him what I can then do is just call him so he's up right out round that corner up there he can't see me but if I call him ghost now I'm not sure if you can hear that but he calls back now why I want a bird which can call back like this is only to do with the fact that these birds if they get lost talking to you is one of the best ways of being able to find them so if I call him again ghost let's try that one again ghost ah no he stopped because he's actually watching me out of the uh, corner of the aviary but if I come up uh, just to the side just here Ghost often then, now I'm out of sight, will start calling me and this helps me to locate him whilst I'm actually working. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready and just get him geared up and start flying him. And uh, you're going to have to see, I have to uh, just wait for me to turn the lights on. But Ghost is just round the corner and as soon as he sees me just here, he'll stop calling. Once I step back and I start talking again, he'll start calling again, just like that. And that's how I find these birds if I ever lose them in the dark. So when I'm working with these birds, obviously I don't want them calling at me all the time. So uh, what obviously I want them to do is to just be quiet. So the birds know to be quiet when I come up to them. And why that is, is not because I try and uh, sort of reinforce quiet behavior. I just ignore the screeching, keep the food piling in nice and quick. And the bird soon gets used to not screeching whilst you're in actual training session mode. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get Ghost ready and bring him out and fly him. Just so you can see, obviously he's now quiet when I fly him and when I work with him as well. And that just comes with a little bit of work and a little bit of maturity on the bird's behalf as well. Oh. Right. Okay, so some I just want to go through is just actually how I train these birds to obviously stop sort of making noise when you're about. Now what's important to know is that making noise is how they communicate. So you never want to stop it fully, so I never chastise it, I never sort of punish it or anything like that. But when I've got a bird and I'm out training it and I'm out working it, I get the bird used to being quiet whilst it's in my presence just by getting the food in faster than the bird can really sort of stop to think and start vocalising. If you stop feeding and you try and wait and wait and wait until the bird stops vocalising, you can be there all night. So what I do is I feed as soon as that first bit goes in, the second bit goes in, the third bit goes in, and then the bird gets used to not having to call each and every time it wants food. 
Then what you do is very simply, you just put a slight pause on it. So the first bit of food goes in, then once that's swallowed, just give it half a second, then the next bit, and then that half a second turns into two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds, and it just builds up until the bird gets used to the fact that to get your attention and to ask you to fly it and to ask you to feed it, it doesn't need to be screaming his head off, and that's how I get there. Ghost. Okay, so obviously as you can see, whilst I'm uh, working with him, um, obviously you've got a quiet bird. And then what I've done is over the sort of last couple of years, I've just delayed the feeding. So we obviously he stays quiet when I'm working with him. Now you may notice he's flying on a crayonce tonight. And the next video I'm going to do will be how to use a crayonce so it doesn't tangle up. And how to uh, obviously use it effectively with birds without damaging them. But what I'm going to do is just carry on, carry on flying him. He's very good. He'll sit and wait for me. But uh, whilst I'm obviously finishing up, make sure, obviously, if you've liked this video, you hit the subscribe button just down here. Check out how I trained Ghost in the original video over there. And then eventually, one day, there may even be a playlist up top.